This is Carl at National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through this 2021 uh, Flagstaff Classic model 832 RKSB. All right, so let's walk to the rear here. So you have power stabilizers. You have one switch for the rear, both rear, and one switch for both front. The rear switch is right here. Okay. <coughs> Got an, a power awning on this slide room plus a kitchen outside kitchen area so I can do this one hand I guess I have to turn the camera there sorry about that so you have a <coughs> excuse me you have a pull-out cooktop this cooktop has to be plugged in you can see you got the male end there uh, and it will hook up let me see if I can get a good spot to see it oh, if I can <laughs> I'm trying to find a way so I don't have to get down here, but I guess I have to. All right. Move my monitor here. Yikes. There it is right there. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Quick connect. LP fitting to hook your grill up to. Okay. All right. Sorry about the camera work. Okay. Here we go. And you have a, a refrigerator, works on 110, so, and there's no switch for it, so as soon as you plug in the trailer, it turns on. Okay, you got another power awning with an LED strip there. Of course, your stairs fold right into the trailer. You can adjust the length of the legs by pulling that pin out. There's one on each side and adjusting the legs accordingly. You got a TV mount mounting bracket, power and signal out for the TV. Your griddle hangs right here and you get another LP hose with it and that will plug in right down here there it is there it looks like yep so you have to plug that in also now these holes if if you look straight through those holes you would see there's a, a shaft that comes out of the frame with a pin through it uh, that's so you can crack the or crank the slide room manually if you happen to get in some trouble with it if it, it fails or it gets damaged or something uh, the other one is here for the for the other side. Okay, so it can't they can be cranked manually in, in an emergency. Okay. So docking lights, there's those front uh, switch for the front stabilizers. This is just a hookup for a solar panel if you excuse me if you wanted to uh, uh, put a solar battery charger on there. Okay. You've got a power tongue jack. If this was to fail, you can pull this plug out and use a three-quarter inch socket or a three-quarter inch crank on it and crank it up and down manually to get you out of trouble. You have two 30-pound LP tanks with an automatic changeover regulator. You've got two uh, deep cycle marine batteries that are wired to 12 volts, so it's 12 volt output and um, just double the storage capacity. All right, and this little red thing here, if you can see it, that is um, that is the kill switch for your batteries. So you can shut the batteries off, disconnect them from the from the trailer. Uh, you'd want to do that because when you put it into storage, let's say the the um, the carbon monoxide and LP gas detectors are hardwired to the battery, so they'll draw the battery down. This way, you can put it into storage and not and not, it doesn't dry down nearly as fast. Alright, so storage. So this this top crank here is the one that you use to crank the the slide rooms if you need to. Alright. This bottom one is the three-quarter inch crank that would you would use on your tongue jack. Okay? Alright. This uh, this table hangs on the grill rail next to the grill. It's just a utility table. That bag there is where your power cord goes. If you want to put it back in the bag after you, when you when you're uh, when you're ready to leave the campground. All right. So this is your hot water heater here. This works on both gas and electric. I just need you to know that there's a switch here, right here. This rocker switch. It it controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover. There's also switches inside, but you need to know there's a second switch right here, okay? Um, 
Never run this water heater without water in it. It has water right now because the trailer is, is now summarized. It's, it's, it's got water in it and the, the water heater tank has got water in it, but never fire up the tank unless you have water in it, in the water heater, okay? That's important. I'll show you the other switch that we get inside. This is just a, um, a uh, shower, outside shower. Now, the most common way to get uh, water to your trailer is right here, the city water connection. You just put the water, uh, you just hook up the hose, turn on the water, and you're ready to go. Now, if you go to a campsite or a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsites, like some of the older state parks, let's say, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank here and um, then use the onboard pump to pump water. So even if you don't have city water, you can still camp, like, you know, you can still use all the plumbing like you do as long as you fill the tank. All right, now this, this one here is a black tank flush, right? So like it says on the sticker here, always make sure that the black tank valve is open before you turn on the water. So what, what you do here is you'll, you'll dump the, the, or these are the gray tanks here. You got two gray tanks. Um, that sink and shower water and then over here you see the black one is a black tank valve the black tank is toilet water and waste so what you do is you pull the black tank first and dump that water then you use the gray water second and it sort of cleans out the uh, hose a little bit because it's much cleaner water than the black water then you can hook the hose at the dump station onto here and it'll spray out your black tank and it'll clean off the sensors and that sort of thing so it's a really good thing to do um, you, you're like I said, the sensors will, will be sprayed off and they don't get clogged up and you don't start getting false readings from them, so it's a good thing. Um, also, this one here has to do with winterizing the trailer. You have to educate yourself a bit on that if you do it yourself, but you draw the antifreeze into the system using this port right here. And that is just cable and satellite through right there. Okay? So, here's the other hole for the slide out on the other side, so you can, you can operate all three of them if you need to. It takes a lot of cranking, but it, uh, it beats driving home with your slider remote. Um, the, your power cord is a 50 amp cord and it's 30 feet long, right there. Uh, you have a ladder, so, which is important because you, can, you need to inspect the roof every 90 days or have somebody else do it. So uh, go up on the roof and check everything out, make sure all the sealant and all the uh, um, all the sealant there's no cracking or separation to make sure that there's no damage to the roofing material by road debris flying up there or low branches that sort of thing Sh check your vent covers all that you do that every 90 days so figure once in the spring once in the middle of summer once in the fall okay also that is the vent for your range hood it has a baffle inside you can reach up and and open it so if you're going to be venting with the range hood you want that to flap freely otherwise you keep it shut this housing tells us this is pre-wired for a backup camera so uh, um, we do sell them here if you're interested. Um, basically when you turn on your running lights, it lights up the camera so you can see when you're backing up and when you're going down the road if you choose to. Okay, all right, so let's go inside. I hope the sound's okay. We've been having trouble with this, so I'm, I'm trying to talk right into the microphone, but it's not always, it's not always that easy. Okay, so here we are. So you have a, a touch panel here. You, to turn it on, you push the power and hold it until you hear it beep. Okay. Um, right here are your tank levels. You still have some fresh water in there. We leave, left it in there so you can, in case you want to run the water or something when you're going through your walkthrough, you can do it here. Okay, they just go up automatically. You don't have to push any buttons. There is an app for this. You can see a, a Google Play and an the, the, the Apple App Store. You can, you can get the app for your phone. Um, entry light, porch light, awning lights, uh, step light, <laughs> aisle light, okay? So, um, your, to start your water heater on electric, I told you there's a switch outside, so remember that. But here's your electric switch in here, you would turn it on there. Um, to light it on gas is right here. Now the water pump is right here. Now you use the water pump, like I said, to pump water out of the fresh water tank. Um, if you're if you're using uh, potable water, and um, also when you winterize, you use the water pump too. You have tank heaters, so this has a, a winterized or winter kit in it, cold weather kit in it. So all the tanks have heating pads on them, and the elbows uh, have a wrap around them. So 
you can you can go out much longer in the in the fall early winter and you can go out earlier in the fall or excuse me earlier in the spring or late winter okay your slide room buttons in and out in and out in and out so you have those there your power awning the one right over the door and then this power awning here which is the one on the slide out um, never leave the awnings out unattended of course you always want to reel them in if you're not going to be uh, be at the campsite all right so this thing here is the is the switch for the power or the Wi-Fi Ranger so what this Wi-Fi Ranger is is a signal booster for for uh, public Wi-Fi camp in this case we'll talk about campground Wi-Fi so um, you look at the top line here it says network and then it says sky for LTE 8095 when you when you look at your Wi-Fi with your cell phone and your tablets all your family's device devices you'll see this and you'll you'll put in a password and uh, and you'll set that up to connect automatically um, then um, when you after you've done that what when let's say you pulled into the campground and they they gave you a password in the name of their public Wi-Fi uh, so you would go to the control panel here you type this type this address into a browser and you'll see everything the Wi-Fi Ranger sees right so the Wi-Fi Ranger will uh, will see the the campground Wi-Fi you'll pick that out select it and then uh, put in the password that they they give you and you're hooked up it increases your bandwidth you get a much better stronger public Wi-Fi signal that's what it's all about um, now the middle is the is the temporary password change me now 8095 so you're gonna set your own password and all that with using that um, so uh, it's it's a really good that's the, the, the options people use the most it's the free option you get better public Wi-Fi now there is uh, an option with this to use a, a, a SIM card and you would have to go through your your whoever you get your cellular service from it would be like paying for another phone or a tablet or something you had to, you'd have to pay a monthly fee but the bottom line is you can use this for cellular too uh, most people don't because they've got their phones anyway um, the only time people really do that is if they work out of their trailer I see people do it but um, that that's a paid service but the the most the most common used is the pre is the free public Wi-Fi booster and that's that operates like I like I told you okay hopefully that made sense to you um, okay so with your with your um, thermostat it's it's simple you go through the different systems and you just keep pushing it you rotate through all of them fan or, or heat air conditioning and there's also a fan selection the fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor try to run fan and air conditioner on auto if you can that's the best way to do it you select on and off here there's a zone selection here this is pre-wired let me look here because it's a 50 amp system this will be pre-wired for a second air conditioner so this bedroom would be zone two so what this sticker is telling us is that the wires for a sensor uh, for this air conditioner are behind here. It's pre-wired. Also, the air conditioner would fit in this um, in this roof vent right here. And that's I'm sure that's what that sticker says. I haven't read it, but I know that's what it says. So it's just pre pre-wired, pre-prepped to add a second air conditioner if you wanted to. Okay? And this would be zone two at that point. Okay. So let's walk around and see what we've got here. This is a hide a bed here. You pull it. You pull the cushions off. Set them aside. Grab it here and pull it out. And it's a three-panel hide a bed. It's pretty comfortable. You got theater seating here. With um, let's see what we've got here. With let me pull that up. It's got it's the shake and bake model. So <laughs> it uh, it vibrates and it also heats up. And then you got a light for the cups there. Okay, and you have a. a that's the rip cord for your um, foot rest right there. So, okay. This is your griddle here. I told you about this hangs outside. And you use this cord or this this hose here to plug it in. See this one? This one has a quick connect also. Um, the refrigerator is a Dometic gas absorption refrigerator, so it'll work on AC power um, or LP gas. So what you want to do is, these are the switches for here, on and off here, there's on. You select um, your source here, you want to go auto. That's the most common kind of way, wait a minute, let me turn it back on. So you want to go auto, which is right there. You can see the little dot lit up. Auto means electricity, it'll always seek out electricity first. 
and if it can't find it it'll switch to gas or if you have a power failure at the campground let's say in the middle of the day and you're out exploring it'll sense that and it'll automatic, automatically switch over to gas so it'll spoil your food you can switch it to to gas to dedicate it to gas if you want to um, but most people will just keep it on auto and of course that's your temperature there you want it up all the way almost all the time if it, if it starts to frost or something it's cooler outside then you can back it off a little bit but generally speaking you'll have it up all the way you've got a pantry behind this door here your uh, microwave works like any other microwave uh, this is the vent hood that I talked about the range hood um, I just remember I told you there's a on the vent there's a baffle so if you if you run the uh, fan you want to open that baffle up so it vents to the outside got a light your um, range you spark it to light it so you're just this is the sparker you, it's clockwise to spark it so you go like so and spark it and you can see it lit right there and of course you got three knobs for the three burners um, also you have a oven now the oven has to pilot light on it so if you look at the very bottom all the way to the back and I'll spark it so you can see it hopefully you can see that I can't tell if you can or not but anyway it does spark I think you can see that um, so what you do is you you come over to the to the knob on the right which is the oven knob you go to the picture of the flame which means pilot you depress it and you hold it you keep holding it through the whole process then you're going to take your other hand and spark this till the pilot light lights down here once it lights you still hold it in for another 10 seconds after it lit you go to operating temperature and it cycles on and off as an oven does but when you shut it off the flame goes out but so does the pilot light um, so you have to relight it each time you use the oven all right so you have uh, plugs plus a USB charger here um, your chairs, you, you can see how the inner legs are all tied together. That's just so they don't fly around and break something. So you have to do that. Plus you have a leaf that extends out. Um, you have a fireplace and you have a remote for each thing here. This is the fireplace remote. So the fireplace, I'll shut it off, back on. Oh, let's get down here so you can see it hopefully. Um, So you got fan speed, you can set the, the look of the fire, you can see like that, and there's also a thermostat on it that goes up in, I think this one goes in 5 degree increments, no, no this one just, it goes one by one, so that this, this one you can just go one at a time, but you set that, also it has a timer on it, so um, you can uh, set it to turn on and shut off, um, you know, let's say you get up at the same time every morning, and it's a cool time of the year, instead of using up your LP, you could just set this to turn on, uh, you know, 20 minutes before you get out of bed, and it'll have the place warmed up for you, which is nice, and you're not using any of your LP, so that's good. This is the remote for your uh, sound right here. So basically this plays CDs and DVDs right through there. You can, you got a USB port here, you got an HDMI in, if you wanted to go into the system with like a Blu-ray player, or a, a game machine for kids or grandkids on rainy weekends. You go straight into it that way. Um, you have three zones right here. One is this room, two is the bedroom, and three is outside. Now zone three you can set the source and the volume for zone three separately. So you could be watching a movie in here and listen to the radio outside let's say. So um, you do that by pushing the Z3 button and that's zone three there and it'll allow you to set the volume and choose a source okay so you can set that independently of each other um, it also has Bluetooth of course so you can you know you can stream wirelessly from your phone or tablets um, so it does a lot it's uh, and it has radio AM FM radio and you can it's got presets and all that also of course alright and there's sound, sound bars right here and then the TV basically it works like any other TV you got a remote for it uh, this this is a you can pull this open you have storage. Um, this is a signal booster. See how it's green right here? So when you're using the antenna, you want it on, or you won't get a good picture. But when you're just using campground cable or whatever, just shut it off. Uh, you don't you don't need it. But when you're using over the air antenna, you want that on. Okay, making some progress here. 
Okay. Um, one, let me look around for the the uh, LP detector. See if I could find a darn thing. I didn't didn't see it right off the bat. All right. Oh, here it is over here. So it's on the side here. You can barely see it, but it's got a green light on it, and it should always be on. It'll tell you if you have a LP leak or there's a carbon monoxide buildup, or if it beeps very slowly, it's telling you that your batteries are low. Okay. Back over to here where I, I passed right over this, but this, this device is your power converter. Converts a, AC to DC power. So in this case, it's 110 AC, which is this side here with the circuit breakers, and they're labeled. And then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. You've got 12 volt fuses here, and they're labeled. So that's where the DC power comes from. As long as you're plugged in, this will sense how much energy your batteries need up front, and it'll keep them charged all the time. Plus, if one of these fuses blow, they'll actually light up, and you can see them through this tinted plastic here. Okay. And the the um, everything in the bath bathroom itself uh, it, it is is the same as at home. You've got a, a shower, of course, in a in a sink, but the shower has a feature called a water miser. That's right here. Okay. So what this does is it recirculates water. The idea is that uh, if you're if you're waiting for the water to heat up, you don't want to just use up water, waste water, and then just send it down the drain to the gray tank to wait to that also take up storage in your gray tank. So you can put it into this mode here and it will recirculate. It'll just send it around in a loop and until uh, this changes color. You'll see it distinctly change color. Into a, this one I think turns into a richer blue, but I, I'm not positive. But you'll know it changed color anyway. And that's when the water's hot. So then you would just flip it to the normal position and you just use the shower like normal. It just keeps you from wasting water uh, and, and also wasting storage space in your, in your gray tank. So that's a water miser. I want to tell you, all these, all these uh, um, appliances and, and components to the trailer, there's a, there are, is paperwork in your packet. Plus, you can always go onto the manufacturer's websites and look at their, their videos also. they got good videos, okay? This is a um, four-speed exhaust fan. You always want to run this with the shower because uh, these trailers are built super tight so you want to uh, uh, pull, the, um, uh, pull the humidity out so you don't create a climate where you can get mold or mildew. Okay, the toilet of course if you haven't owned an RV before the toilet can't be used dry. This is the pedal here. This is just resi little residual water pressure. So the black tank is directly below. Right, right now it's empty because it's been dumped, right? So let's say you pull into the campground, you park, obviously you hook up your water and your power, then you'll come inside in here and you'll have your chemical with you and you have to put about a gallon or so in the, in the tank before you start using it, otherwise the smell will be extremely bad and also can clog up. So you step on the pedal, water will come swirling out because you're hooked up to water, it'll come swirling out, you put about a gallon in there, there's no way to tell exactly what that is, you just use common sense and also put your chemical in there. Um, then you're ready to use it. Let's say you're, you, you have to get the tank dumped because it's full and you're going to stay another week at the, at the, at the site. Um, after you get it dumped, you'll just repeat the procedure. You come back in here, step on the pedal till about a gallon of water goes in there, put in there a dose of chemical and you're all set till you, till you dump it next time. Okay. Under here, this has a, this has a second hinge that yeah, behind there is the is the water pump and uh, actually the water heater, bypass valves and everything. So that's how you ac access all the winterizing uh, stuff. So, okay, okay, we've already been in here once, but we'll uh, uh, we'll go through what we, what we didn't cover. You, it, there's a backer plate here, so you can hang a, a bracket for a TV, and there's your hookups up there. Um, this is pre-plumbed, I believe. Yes, so it's pre-plumbed for to put a washer and dryer in here if you want to. Okay, that's just a little wardrobe behind the mirrors there. This pulls up, of course. Oh, I'm not even going to bother, but it pulls up and there's storage underneath the bed. All right, so you got everything you need and then some. Okay, great. So, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. 
And uh, please keep in mind what I told you about inspecting your roof. As a trailer owner, that's very important, no matter who made the trailer. That's not this trailer, it's every trailer ever made. It needs to be inspected, and if you, eventually, some year, sometime, you're going to see uh, um, some cracking or separation where the sealant is. It's usually in a corner area, but not always. When you see that, you have to get it touched up, that's all. Um, all trailers have to be maintained, and that's very important, okay? Also, like I stated, this is, right now it's ready to camp. There's no antifreeze in the system. The water heater is full, so you're ready to go. But, of course, in the fall, you have to winterize it, so. Okay, well, thank you very much.